Hi everyone. Again, in this part, uh, we will be learning some practicalities about R and missing values. I've uploaded this document to learn both the markdown and the PDF file, but I want to go through some aspects of it. So first things first, missing values in R, they are coded with the symbol NA, which stands for not available. So to start, suppose that we want to compute the mean of this vector y that is formed by three values. Obviously, we do not need r to compute this mean, but just to make the point. Okay, so I have a vector, three elements, and I want to compute its mean, as simple as it can be. So it's three. Now, let us suppose that I replace one of the values, say the last one, for instance, by um, an NA. So I have a missing value in my vector. I have two values observed and one missing value. And I want to do the same. I want to compute the mean. Now, I do not obtain any result, and we suspect that it's because we have a missing value. And let's inspect further and see the help of the function mean. We see that it has several arguments, and by default they take some values, and in particular we see this argument here, na.rm, and we can read it's a logical value indicating indicating whether NA values should be stripped before the computation proceeds. And by default, it is set to false. So if we have missing values, they will not be ignored, but the function also does not know what to do. So that's why we have obtained uh, an NA as the result. But if we replace that argument, it's the false, which is false, by true, we are saying or we are allowing the function to just ignore the missing values. And now we will do basically, we will do the mean of the two observed values, one and three, which we know that it's two. And yes, basically the message from this very simple example is that the built-in function mean in R uh, as an extra argument that basically allow us to ignore the missing values, to remove them from the computations. As we will see in the next lecture, this is in general not recommended, but this is what the function does if we let this argument to be true. We are just exploring different functions. Now let us uh, look at another very popular function in built-in function. Built-in functions are functions that already come with R, that we do not need to install any package in order to have access to those functions. And this function is the LM function, which allows us to fit linear regression models. And uh, just for the sake of illustration, we are not interested in the data set right now. We will also use the built-in that is available in our data set air quality. Okay, so we have here the data air quality. And we see that we have six variables on our data set and let's see how many observations 153 and now let us check whether there are and i forgot to mention but just for again with um, for the sake of illustration let us suppose that we are interested in fitting the following regression model. We have ozone as our uh, response and wind as our uh, covariate. And we will assume that the assumptions of the linear regression uh, model are met. Again, this is just to illustrate how the function behaves when we have missing values, okay? So let us investigate whether any of these two variables as missing values. Of course, if we are doing this, it's because one of them at least should have missing values. Okay, we have this comment here. 
is dot na that basically when we apply it to a variable in this case the ozone variable it will return false whether false if the corresponding value is not uh, an na and true if it is so we see that we have some true so this is an indication that we have some missing values in this variable ozone and how many of them we can do the sum and basically the sum will uh, sum the number of trues which um, are coded as one so i have 37 and here zero so the variable ozone um, has 37 missing values and the wind is fully the variable wind is fully observed we could also have accessed this information through the function summary and if we do summary of air quality we look at all the variables in a single um, just once so we immediately see that ozone has in fact 37 missing observations solar radiation another variable in the data set that we are not using here in the regression has seven missing values and all the other four variables are complete Okay, so we know that in our regression model, our response has some missing values while the covariate is fully observed. Let us now fit the regression model and save the corresponding result here in this object that I called fit. Okay, I know that I have missing values and I have obtained estimates for my beta zero and for my beta one. So I guess, or we can guess, that what the function LM did behind the scenes was to remove all the pairs for which the ozone was missing. And in fact, we can check that through this comment na.action. If you want to know more, we can just type the help. And the description of this comment says extract information on the NA action used to create an object. So basically it is telling us what did the LM function when fitted the model. And if we save this on the object, delete it, and then we do NA print, we got that 37 observations deleted to, due to missingness. Okay, so as we uh, already um, guessed the observations were removed and we see that a difference between the function mean and the lm function is that the mean by default does not exclude the missing observation but the lm function does exclude the missing observations again it's not good practice to do this we are just investigating what some of the functions do when we have missing values in our data set and of course it's mandatory before we use any function to really know what the function is doing and as in any formal statistical or even informal statistical analysis a good point to start is by doing some exploratory analysis and if we have missing values there are several packages in r that can um, help us on performing some visualizations and there are four packages this vim nanyar mice and amelia i will load the packages if you i have already installed the package in advance if you haven't you need to first install the package and only then load them okay so i will load the the packages And, okay, let me start. I think the, the package that I like the most for visualizations is Vim. There is a corresponding article, uh, there is an article, sorry, um, describing uh, the, um, the capabilities of the package and I have uploaded the article to, to learn. So you can read it, it's, a, it's an interesting one. So there is the aggregate plot and we can then you can look better at the syntax but let us look at what the aggregation plot gives us so when we run our 
we have just created the object, the aggregate plot. Uh, it's the function aggr. We pass the data set. And when we create the object, we do not ask for the plot immediately. We ask for the plot later using the comment plot and basically numbers equal to true to print numbers here and proportion equal to false so the number of missing values is not given as a proportion but we instead have the numbers that are missing on each variable so let's look at the output basically this is a uh, a plot with on the horizontal axis the variables and the number of missing observations for each of the variables in our data set. We already knew by uh, because we have already looked at the summary of our we have applied the function summary to our data set and we already knew that uh, all variables apart from ozone and solar radiation were complete and we have this information here and we know that ozone and solar radiations have missing values and here on the right we have how these occur in the different variables for instance out of the 153 observations we know from here that 100 and 11 observations have complete information on all six variables. 35 of them have missing values only for the ozone variable. Five of the observations have missing values only for the solar radiation variable and two observations have missing values on both the ozone and solar radiation. And again, before with the summary function, we got that we have 30 obser 37 observations for which the ozone variable is missing and it's this 35 plus two and seven for which the we do not observe the corresponding solar radiation, it is five uh, plus two. So I think this is very interesting because we immediately know what are the variables that are missing, an idea of the number of missing values, and then the combinations uh, in which variable, the combinations in the different variables uh, about the missing values. Okay, then the package Amelia has this mismap function that if we pass the entire data set, basically what it does is to create the variables here on the horizontal axis and here on the vertical axis, we have the number of the observations and where the missing values um, occur. Again, we see that these variables, day, month, temp, temperature and wind are complete. Ozone and solar radiations, they have missing values. And here we, it's kind of difficult to know precisely what are, what is the number of the observations. Yeah, but we can have at least an idea. I, I'm not, um, super excited about this function but i wanted to let you know that um, that it exists and something similar can be uh, a, a similar plot can be obtained using the matrix plot function in the vim package and basically if we run it it's similar here we have different blocks uh, because mm, the variable month is obviously not a continuous variable. It ranges from 1 to 12 and they from 1 to 31. Uh, so they are uh, categorical variables. And the package MICE, uh, which stands for multiple imputation by chained equations and which we'll be using, we will be using uh, quite a lot when we learn uh, about multiple imputation. Uh, as this function md pattern that gives us something very similar to what we have obtained in the aggregation plot and in fact if we run it we obtain exactly that what we already knew from the aggregation plot there are 111 observations with complete information on all variables 35 with uh, um, with missing values for the ozone, but all the other five variables are complete and so on and so forth. I'm just listing down the options in terms of visualizations across the different packages in R. And a package that I think it's quite useful is from Vim. Again, I think Vim is one of the best package for visualization with missing values and it's margin plot. Margin plot, it's basically a special kind of skater plot. Of course, we are limited as in any skater plot 
well, we can look at three dimensions, but most scatter plots we are limited, uh, at least here in this function, to look at um, two dimensional plots. So we can look at uh, pairs of variables at um, at a time, but I think nonetheless that we can have very you we can extract very useful information from this function. And basically, what is this plot giving to us? I've asked for the margin plot between the first and the third variable in the data set air quality and these are the wind and the ozone concentration variables. This central area, the the blue dots here in this center central area, it's the usual scatter plot. So are the observed pairs of ozone and wind and these are um, these dots are for the observations that have complete information on both the wind and the ozone variable. So we know for each observation what is the corresponding wind value and the corresponding ozone um, value. But we know that while wind is, um, is complete, we do not have any missing values. Ozone has missing values. And in fact, we know that there are, and even if we didn't know, it here the plot tells us that there are 37 uh, missing values for the ozone variable and so there are 37 values for which we know what is the wind value but we do not know the ozone value because it's missing and they are here and they are drawn at the corresponding wind value so here the wind value is around five it's here it's between should be like one or something close to it. So then we have several plot, several dots, several observations whose wind is between five and 15. So these are the observations for which we observe the wind value, but do not observe the ozone value. We do not have any red dots here because the wind um, variable is complete. So there are no observations for which we observe the ozone but do not observe the wind. If there were any, they would, they would be plotted here at the level of the ozone that was observed, but the wind was not available. But that's not the case. But we can, you can try on your own, for instance, doing the margin plot between the first and the second variable because it's between ozone and solar radiation and they both have missing values. And now, this is a margin plot because on the margins we have two box plots. And what are these box plots? Well, here, these are the box plots of the wind observations, but stratified by the missingness on the ozone. So, the red box plot is the box plot of the wind observations for which the corresponding ozone is not observed. And the blue box plot is the box plot of the wind observations for which the corresponding ozone is observed. And here for the ozone, because the variable wind is fully observed, we only have the blue box plot, is the box plot of the ozone observations and all of them have the corresponding wind, um, wind value observed. And we have learned already that if the observations, if the missing, if the if the values in the if the variable the values in the variable ozone are missing completely at random we know that then when we look on the missingness induced on the other variables on the missingness on the groups induced by the missingness in particular when i look at the wind variable and form the groups for those who have observed and missing values on the ozone and this margin plot it's exactly what is given it is it is what is it is uh, giving to me, I know that the two box plots should not look that different. And in fact, here they don't look that different. Of course, uh, to what I'm trying to do is to rule out that uh, the ozone missingness depends on wind and to be sure that it's missing completely at random. Well, I can never be sure, right? Because I cannot rule out missing not at random, but I would need to look at ozone against temperature, ozone against the other variables, right? But just to illustrate that, I think this margin plot, it's cool and provides useful information. And also we can obtain something similar, uh, this type of box plots, uh, using the Vim package again and using this P box. And here uh, I will tell that I want to 
I have two variables uh, with missing values, right? Ozone and solar radiation, and I'm looking at the distribution of wind. So here it's the box plot of the wind variable, which is fully observed, and this two box plots here are the wind values for which the observations in ozone are, um, it's the wind values whose, whose um, ozone observations are not missing and those who are missing and the same for the solar radiation. So again, we know that if the variables are missing completely at random, the box plots should not look um, the, too different. Here they do not look too similar, I would say. But yes, this P box basically, we here I've put three, so three is the third variable in our data set, so it's the wind variable, and basically it stratifies the wind variable on the basis of the missingness in the variables that have missing values in our data set, so ozone and solar radiation. So to make clear here, I have the box plot of the wind observations, and here it's the box plot of the wind observations for which the ozone is observed, the box plot of the wind observations for which the ozone is missing, the box plot of the wind observations for which the solar radiation is observed, and the box plot of the wind observations for which the solar radiation is missing. I'm tired. Uh, and, okay, these are, uh, I think, several um, visual uh, diagnostics or explorations that I think are useful. The VIM package, which, as I said, I've uploaded the paper describing the functions available in the package uh, as more functions, so you can look at, um, at more um, exploratory tools for data sets that contain missing values. And very recently, this year, um, it was uploaded, uh, or the paper appeared this year, I think the package possibly appeared last year. It's the NER package. I do not know whether I'm, um, I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's based on the graphical interface ggplot2, uh, which I think you will be learning in statistical programming, at least those on the MSc in Stats and Data Science and Stats and Operations Research. And also it's based on tidy data um, principles and uh, do not worry, uh, it's not mandatory to use ggplot type of plots in the course. I'm just um, mentioning that this exists because I think it's an interesting package so you know all the options that, uh, or at least some of the options that uh, are available out there. For instance, ggplot, I think ggplot, it produces very cool plots. It takes some time, but the plots are cool. And okay, here I'm looking at the scatter plot of ozone and solar radiation. And I know that uh, both, um, both variables are missing values, but I was able to produce the plot. And I was, I got this warning saying that uh, 42 rows containing missing values were removed. So basically, ggplot by default what it does is if we are asking for a scatter plot or a density plot or whatever it automatically excludes all the values that are missing and the nanyar package is used it uses ggplot but it takes missing values into account and you can do a lot of things some of uh, the plots they are very similar to what we can obtain with the vim package i think they are uh, pretty but it's the same information so for instance here we have also the variables. It's very similar to the aggregate plot, right? We have the variables in a slightly, it's arranged in a slightly different way, but we have the variables and the number of missing values. And here on this plot, it's also uh, similar to the, to the matrix plot or to the mismap plot from the Amelia package. We have the observation, the number of the observation for which the missing values are occurring. Again, we cannot precisely say what is the number of the observation, but we can have uh, an idea. And we can also uh, stratify the plots of um, missingness certified by another variable. For instance, what I have here, it's what I had before, but now it's I'm looking at the month, and if apparently the month can only take the value 
although in theory it can range from 1 to 12, the observed values range from 5 um, to 9, and I'm looking that for uh, month 5 we have some missing values in ozone and solar radiation, for month 6 we have missing values on ozone, but there are no missing values in solar radiation, the same for month 7 and for month 9. So, and we could have used other variable here on the facet. Again, we will not be using uh, this package or it's not required to use this package, but I wanted to show that it's available and there are plenty uh, more things that we can do, that you can do with this package. I have uploaded the corresponding paper to learn as well in case you are curious about it. And I also leave the link here because it's in this um, if you copy the link and paste on your browser this is a gallery of visualizations and maybe you can be interested just in explore in exploring a little bit more and uh, for um, exploratory analysis there are I'm sure more uh, plots available but these I think are the essential and most useful ones at least in my opinion and that's everything for this part see you in the next video thank you